Then, in the early 60s, one day, and this is the, do I say the enlightening? Mm -hmm. I, a fellow I had met but didn't know really well, Robert Rush Miller. Miller was a professor of zoology. He's an ichthyologist at the University of Michigan at Ann Arbor, mm -hmm. where he got his PhD under Carl Hubbs, who then went to Scripps, Hubbs Hall that is named after mm -hmm. Carl. Miller, for his dissertation, working under Hubbs, it was the systematics or the taxonomy of the suprinodont fishes, which are the pup fishes, of the Death Valley hydrographic area, going back into the Pleistocene drainages, beginning at Mono Lake and ending up in Death Valley. That whole area was part of the Ice Age drainage. I see. You mean it goes back to the Ice Age? Or oh, yeah. Was... Yeah, yeah. And so the fish originally invaded that area out of the Colorado River system many thousands of years ago, probably it could be in the Pliocene even. Mm -hmm. So then, it's, that whole area is just made to order for an evolutionary biologist. Because the fish being originally the same species, then were separated in different springs. Mm -hmm. And they began their evolutionary change into different species and subspecies. The Owens pupfish, which is one that I've spent most of my time on, evolved in the upper Owens Valley. Probably the entire valley had these things in them. Early records tell of the Indian people there sending these fish out from the margins of the river and drying them for winter food because they are an excellent source of protein. Mm. So uh, the area where the, lo the exact location where a biologist collects an organism is known as the type locality. And from that, they take the type specimen, which is then described and forms the basis for the classification of that organism. This was in the Northwest Spring out in Fish Slough, north of Bishop. Mm -hmm. Collected by Miller back in 19, I think 1947 or 48. Interestingly, when he described the fish, all of these fish were thought to be extinct. We thought there were none left at all. But how did he describe it? Just by the collected material that they had. I see. See, they put them in formal and back I see. Then. They collected it previously. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, these were collected when he was doing his dissertation work. Oh, but I then see. He, after that, uh, when he actually was doing the description, this would have been later, mm -hmm. probably in the late 40s, early 50s, then they thought the fish was extinct. And so he did all of his work with preserved material mm -hmm. back in Ann Arbor. Mm -hmm. So he phoned up one day and he said, Phil, Carl, that being Carl Hubb, is his father-in-law, curiously, Bob married oh. Carl's daughter. And did you know them personally at I, this point? This, not really well, but that mm -hmm. started to a really a great friendship. He said, Carl and I would like to come up and see if maybe somehow there might still be a population of those pupfish up in Fish Slough. And <laughs> Shows a great evolution of thought here. So I said, well, I'll have to get clearance to do this. I wasn't quite as bold as I f was later in my career, and apparently mm -hmm. now. I no learned early on that it's much easier to ask forgiveness and permission. You know? <laughs> so I said, I've got to get a hold of my boss. So I wrote my boss. Back then in the, in the early 60s, phone calls were kind of frowned upon in bureaucracy because they cost a lot. Right. You didn't have the internet, you know, anything like that like we have now. So I wrote him a note. I said, Bob, or Scott was my boss's name. Scott Soul, S O U L E. I said, I have this, this uh, invitation from, and a request actually, from two very eminent professors who would like to come up and see if they could find any Owens pupfish. And so I've, I've offered to give them a day of my time, knowing that oftentimes eminent people like this expect you to drop everything when they come up. Okay, he says, you take your day. Let me just ask, was it so out of the ordinary to yes. do that, that yes. you'd have to have permission? Because yeah, you was. might take a day to do something it, else it without was. asking. It was. Now, if I'd been up collecting trout somewhere, it'd been okay. But a pupfish, what, what good are they? Yeah. <laughs> so up they came with their wives, 
who were probably more responsible for their eminence than they were themselves. They did all the work. They took the notes. They preserved the specimen. All these guys kind of sat back and enjoyed themselves. And Laura Hubbs and Fran Miller were just legendary people. Mm -hmm. Everybody who knows them knows that. So we went out in the marsh. Puffish like water, maybe six inches deep. In the, winter, in the summertime, it's really warm. We went out in July. Mm -hmm. be July of 1964. And <clears throat> they like the, warm water? Yeah, yeah, they do. The water would probably be, I would guess, maybe even to the 90s. Mm -hmm. They like that. So all of a sudden, Carl yelled out, Bob, they're still here. And almost at that moment, Anne, I not only dropped everything, but I never picked it up again. <laughs> that was, it was, it was kind of like in the book of Acts in the New Testament. Uh, <laughs> When Paul was blinded on his road to Damascus and gained his sight back when he got his act back together again, mm -hmm. it was kind of that way with me. Can this you was, this, say why it affected you at well, that point, do you think? <clears throat> I think what it did, just through, it's almost like an inspirational, it really was. I began to realize that what I'd been doing wasn't important, mm -hmm. and this was. Really, what I'd been doing up to that point was essentially devoting my life to providing freezer boxes full of trout for people to take home and cook in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't doing a thing for the basic biological resource. Since the fish that these people were taking back to LA were not natives, they were all introduced from other locations. And dropped by an airplane and into the lake. Some, yeah, yeah. Very artificial, this whole thing. 